Normalization is organizing the attributes of tables, which are entities, uh, in a relational database to minimize redundancy, which is duplication, and ensure data integrity, which is the reliability of the data. Normalization usually involves dividing tables into smaller, uh, less redundant tables, so there's uh, no duplicates of data, and defining relationships between them. So we'll, we'll investigate this a bit further, um, but essentially the process is designed to remove the repeated data and improve the database design. So normally in computer science, when we talk about uh, having redundancy, it refers to the backup of data. So like in um, our hard disk arrays, we have redundant disks, which are duplicate disks, which mirror the, uh, the, the data which is recorded. Um, so this is pretty much the same thing for database design, uh, where with data redundancy, we're removing the duplicate data. So the idea is that we improve the efficiency of the database, ensure that the overall size of the database is smaller. Um, and this way, uh, you know, we're improving the efficiency, and we're improving the size, so there'll be less uh, cost in uh, updating and using this database. Uh, we also need to make sure that we don't uh, insert data in multiple places. So this will keep up the integrity of the database We talk about data integrity, we talk about anomalies. Anomalies, there can be insert anomalies, the update and also delete. Um, so with an insert, um, we're looking at where you need to insert uh, multiple, uh, insert data in multiple fields. Uh, with update, it's if you need to update into multiple tables or fields. Uh, with delete, and it's the same thing, you need, it's if you are deleting in multiple places uh, in order to keep the integrity of the data. So the objective is to isolate the data so that changes cascade through the rest of the database. Um, so when we did some programming beforehand, you saw that we created uh, constraints within our SQL, and this allowed us to cascade changes. So if a, a foreign key was, was uh, changed, um, it would also update in the other table. So normalization is the process used to come up with the best possible design for a relational database. So the tables are organized such that the data isn't unnecessarily duplicated, uh, the data is consistent throughout the database, and the structure of the table is flexible enough to allow you to enter as few or as many records or items as required. The structure should enable the user to make all kinds of complex queries to retrieve data from tables or insert data into tables. So in order for, you, for that to happen, we need to get our data uh, organized in a third normal form. So to start off normalization, we start off with our unnormalized data. Uh, our unnormalized data is just basically a spreadsheet. So first of all, we can see in our spreadsheet uh, that we have duplicate data. So within our course code, uh, we can see that we've got the same course code appearing multiple times. Even with the first name and the last name, we see the students appearing multiple times. Uh, in the course, we've got maths there a couple of times, English, art. Uh, in our levels, we've got stage three, stage two, stage one. So each time, those things need to be entered. They need to be entered multiple times um, when you're updating your data or when you're uh, deleting data. So those are those anomalies which we spoke about before. So let's uh, forget about the actual records, which are the rows within our database, and just focus on the columns or the fields in our database. So these uh, fields will become our items in our first normal form. So these are the attributes, uh, are the fields within our unnormalized form. We can uh, straight away see a pattern within our database uh, and we can actually group these mentally we don't have to do it physically um, we can see that the, the first name the last name student ID and the date of birth are all linked to a student and the student's personal details and then the course code the course the level the course duration uh, the completion date and the results uh, are all related to the course so we can actually group them so the first step in getting to our first normal form is to split up the table so that we have the attributes 
which repeat, re uh, repeat and the attributes which don't repeat. Um, so before uh, we just spoke about grouping the the items and the attributes uh, into the students and also the course. So we can see that we could easily create those two tables. We could create a table or an entity which is the students um, and an entity which is the course. So if we uh, look at that unnormalized data, we can easily um, move across the the module number, uh, the duration, the level, because uh, they all repeat, so we can move them over to the course. The second step is to identify any attributes which uh, can be used as unique identifiers, which are called primary keys. Uh, so for the student tables, it's fairly simple because the trainee is a unique number. Uh, however, with the module number, it repeats. So we couldn't use a module number as uh, a unique identifier. So to combat this, what we can do is create what's called a composite key. So what we do with the composite key is we uh, have the, the one identifier and then we join it with another unique identifier which would, in this case would be the student ID and what that would allow us to do is to create a composite key and this will become our unique identifier for this table. So this means that our class table has a composite key uh, of module and trainee and the primary key for the other table will be our student ID and this is our first normal form. For our second normal form, we're only concerned with the attributes which have more than one key. So we've already identified that the student table has a good unique identifier and that the um, attributes of first name, last name and date of birth are well suited to being in that table, so we can keep them all there. So the main one we're going to focus on is this course table in the first normal form. So we identify that they had this uh, component key because it didn't have a unique identifier. But we also need to see um, uh, and make sure that all of our items um, are reliant um, and have a strong relationship with our unique identifier. So for example, um, we know that our course is well related to the course code. We need to have a course code to have, have a course. Um, we need to have our level and we need to have our duration. So we need to know how long the course runs for. Uh, so that's very important to be in the course date. Um, and also the finish date. But then this, this results here is more indicative of the student rather than the actual course itself. So what we could do is create a new table called results. Um, and within the results, uh, we need to have the course code and the student ID, because the student is related to the result. Um, and we can move those across because the completion date and the result, so when the student actually completed the course um, and the result. So finally we're moving on to our third normal form. So in the third normal form all key attributes must depend only on the primary key. So if we look at the second normal form and move over any attributes which are not, um, not dependent on their table key, uh, we're able to create their own one. So if we look back at our unnormalized data, we can see that the module duration is dependent on the level. Thus, it's not fully dependent on the key. So level can be moved as an independent table, and we can set the, uh, the level as the pri uh, primary key, because we have levels um, of stage one, stage two, stage three. Um, so there's three of them, they're all unique, um, so that'll be fine as its own primary key. And then to reference the, uh, the level within the course, we create a foreign key, and this foreign key maintains the, the relationship in the data link.